what's happening? Are we seeing a shift away from a labor shortage to companies now laying off workers? What's, what's going on? Well, as an expert on Gustavus Doan, how do you feel about the federal government removing his name from Mount Doan earlier this month? I've heard people say things like, for instance, if you remove history, if we forget history, we're doomed to repeat it. So that's just an example. Well, what problems do you think can arise when society removes names from structures that recall the past? It seems like former jail officer Vicki White made a complete change of direction in her life. Personally, this, this case has fascinated me because everybody's wondering what she was thinking. So now when you say curfew, is that more of an umbrella term? What all do you mean when you say curfew? What, what rules have people been having to live by? What are your thoughts on yet another young law enforcement officer from our region, Deputy Brad Johnson, being killed in the line of duty just three weeks after the tragic loss of your son, Radiant Officer Kenneth Kroon? What's your reaction in terms of the 10 Republicans on board with the bill at this point? As the leader of the statewide Episcopal Church here in Mississippi, what, or the Episcopal Diocese rather, what is your reaction to this tragedy? The talk is uh, swirling, of course, around about a possible recession. I've, I've heard talk about it in the news and other places. So what would you say is the forecast on the possibility of a recession and uh, what factors could cause us to go into one? Do you think gun control would be a good thing? Do you think people need to be more armed? I mean, what, what's your opinion on how to prevent things like this going forward? You once lived in a Kentucky community where there was a grocery store shooting similar to the one happened earlier this month in Buffalo, New York. Now, in fact, you were friends with one of the people killed in that shooting. So can you just please explain what it's like to lose a friend to acts of violence like this? I'm very close to my family and it's like I was telling a gentleman earlier today, if my dad were an officer, for instance, I just, I, I can't imagine. You, you see them leaving and you just, you don't even realize that could be the last time that you ever see them. So, I mean, how are you and your family doing during this time? Welcome back to this morning. Folks in Mississippi are feeling the impacts of interest rate hikes, inflation, stock market volatility, high gas prices, and increased mortgage rates. When things like these happen, how would you say people can go about taking steps to forgive people who do things like this? As far as a recession right now, uh, what are your thoughts on whether or not Mississippi and even the nation as a whole, are we headed towards one? As a pastor, what are some words from scripture that have come to your mind during this very difficult time? It may just be a work in progress right now, but pretty soon you'll be able to stop in here and make this your temporary home away from home. Worker says that this is called a computerized metal break, and what it does is it changes sheets of metal from looking like this to looking like this. Now look at how big these things are, just to give you an idea. Watch this. I'm six foot five, okay? Workers here told me this is the hallway that goes to RTE, which stands for Ready to Eat. Now to demonstrate that they will let, they will teach people how to drive here, they're actually going to let me drive this truck. All right, put on the brake. Push, you'll see, push, push it in. That's gonna release the brakes. Right now, the lobby is closed and the drive through window is customer's only option. Right now, there are six active pumps working to drain the water from Octimaha Lake. You can see these pipes behind me. The fire devastated this house. If you look right up here on the front porch, in addition to all the debris, you can see the vinyl right next to the front door was just liquefied. It is really easy to use. You type your name in this box here. There's not much left of the house at 426 Magazine Street, just a bunch of charred debris, a few walls, and a part of the second floor. Fire Marshal Jason Cross said solving the mystery of the Sunday fire is a team effort. We do not know a cause now. It's, it's ongoing. Right now we are working in conjunction with the State Fire Marshal's Office investigators uh, because there was a fatality. The fire devastated this house. If you look right up here on the front porch, in addition to all the debris, you can see the vinyl right next to the front door was just liquefied. And if you look through the front door, you can see right out the back of the house and see the trees out behind. Because of the damage, uh, you know, we really couldn't uh, find walls or anything like that. Cross said friends and family reached out with information about the house and its layout that's helping the investigation. Given the, the amount of damage and the equipment that we had to use, uh, it's making it uh, pretty difficult on us. The fire was so large and so hot that it affected nearby buildings, including the Good Samaritan Free Clinic right next door. This is the clinic's first day back open after a two-week break. Clinic board member Sam Pace said the clinic is grieving with the family. 
it was obviously a rip-roaring, very, very uh, bad fire, and we're so sorry about the loss of life next door. We seem to have some damage to one side of our building. All of the glass windows and doors are damaged. They're cracked, and our windows have been blown out. Um, blinds on the inside have been melted, and some of the flooring on the inside of the building um, has, has been affected also. Fagan explained the heat also melted some of their electrical wiring and took out their Wi-Fi. They're expecting to have Wi-Fi back up Tuesday to begin seeing patients again Tuesday evening. She said while insurance and a contractor help them navigate the situation, the clinic is staying open. Just imagine the time and the energy they put into making it look like the real deal. It's pretty cool. This piece is at the Crossroads Museum in downtown Corinth. The two behind the project are Bill Avery and Lee Thurner. We needed something that would attract children. That ought to do it. Visitors can even give the train whistle a tug. <laughs> Avery says he and his partner have now spent over a year working on this off and on. The crossroads out here is sitting on the most historic piece of real estate there is because of the Civil War being fought over it. He says even the artwork on the wall was done by a professional artist out of Tennessee. But like the model itself, it's not finished yet. The train track system in this display has the Glen area, the Iuka area, and the downtown Corinth area. So what made them decide to build this model? Thurner says before, the museum had more of an emphasis on the Civil War. But he says the Civil War Interpretive Center in Corinth does a better job than they can because they have more resources for it. So they started down a new path. So we had these two empty galleries and we decided to um, devote them to an emphasis on the railroad history of Corinth. Well, these, these right here are models of actual trains that served Corinth at one time or another. The top one there is the uh, city of Miami, which ran from Chicago to Miami and passed through Corinth. Uh, the middle one there is the Gulf Coast Rebel. They also plan to have some farming and an industrial complex area. I wondered if Avery was the kind of person who had every train set out there when he was a child. I would have liked to have had, but I didn't have the money or the means. And uh, so I'm reliving my childhood now. <laughs> <laughs> Lee and I both wanted to see it come to some type of fruition, even though it may not be totally completed in our lifetime, but it's, it's, it's in that direction. In Corinth, Bronson Woodruff, WTBA 9 News. We keep America rolling. Cooley Transport is hiring. At the company's Tupelo location, personnel manager Wendy Cooley said the company moves general merchandise all across the continental United States. We transport furniture, copper tubing, bathware. We also transport um, dry and refrigerated items. Tony Donald is an outbound dispatcher for Cooley. His job duties include getting loaded trucks to their destinations. Both he and Wendy explained the company needs drivers, but also has other positions to fill. Either a class CDL license or mechanic job or office person. You have to be 21 and have a commercial driver's license to drive for the company. And don't worry about coming in with experience. They'll teach you. So people who have a permit to drive a truck, they will actually teach them here at Cooley how to improve their skills so that they're more prepared when they go to get their license. Now to demonstrate that they will let, they will teach people how to drive here, they're actually going to let me drive this truck. Getting educated here as we ride in this truck. So if a truck has a bed in the back, it's called a sleeper. If it does not, then it's considered a day cab. And for anybody who's never seen what the inside of a truck looks like, this is it. There's our driver, and back here, this one is a sleeper, so it's got a bed and a little closet, you said, correct? Yes. All right. Got a refrigerator. Oh, it's got a refrigerator, too. We will put you with a trainer. <laughs> All right, put on the brake. But she'll see you. Push it in. That's going to release the brakes. How far? That's good. Now, give us some gas. Yep. Nice, I love it. And it can take as long as you need until you're ready to go on your own. This is great. <laughs> I can get used to this. <laughs> Donald said anyone who would like to work for Cooley can expect a fine work environment. 
family atmosphere, we care about the driver. If you would like to work for Cooley, you can apply online.